a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and older. So today, um, for Valentine's Day, I'm going to do a video about the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. <clears throat> I never really did much research about this. Um, I didn't do a ton of research about this today. I just found something online through a website that I'll leave the link in the description below from. And I just wanted to do something totally different from uh, what I usually do on Valentine's Day as far as videos go. I already told you guys how I feel about Valentine's Day. And... Um, I think that was last year I did a video about that. So today I'm just going to do something, the history of uh, this. And so we really know what it is we're celebrating. Hallmark has turned it into a holiday filled with, if you don't buy your loved one um, a box of chocolates, then you're going to get kicked out the door or whatever. Or <laughs> It's turned into a really silly thing. Um, but that's what happens when major events turn into Hallmark holidays. You forget what the major event was about in the first place, the history of it. Almost like Hallmark reinvents the holiday <laughs> for, and takes over it for themselves. So kind of bizarre and weird to me if you ask. If you were to ask me, yeah, I would say it's weird. Anyway, I rolled a joint using the uh, trip papers, the clear cellulose papers, and I used what's called sugar shake. And sugar shake is just a little tiny nugs, sugar leaves, and uh, stems. You put the stems aside for a nice strong herbal tea. Um, sometimes the trim will have something like this in here. Look at that. <laughs> sometimes they'll throw in uh, a nice size nug in there. <laughs> At least where I get my trim from, they do that. <laughs> and that's my secret where I get it from. <laughs> All right, let me light this up and we'll get into this. Cheers, everyone. And thanks for joining me today. So I found this online, like I said, and um, if you guys care to elaborate and add more to this, the history of St. Valentine's Day Massacre, you can feel free to put that in the comment section below and share it with other people who are watching this channel and this, this actual video today. <laughs> so here we go. The St. Valentine's, Valentine's Day Massacre, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> Four men dressed as police officers enter gangster bugs. Bugs Moran's headquarters on North Clark Street in Chicago. Line seven of Moran's henchmen against a wall and shoot them to death. The St. Valentine's Day Massacre, as it is now called, was the culmination of a gang war between arc rivals Al Capone and Bugs Moran. George Bugs Moran was a career criminal who ran the Northside Gang in Chicago during the bootlegging era of the 1920s. He fought bitterly with Scarface, Al Capone, for control of smuggling and trafficking operations in the Windy City. Throughout the 20s, both survived several attempted murders. On one notorious occasion, Moran and his associates drove six cars past a hotel in Cicero, Illinois, where Capone and his associates were having lunch and showered the building with more than 1,000 bullets. A $50,000 bounty on Capone's head was the final straw for the gangster. He ordered that Moran's gang be destroyed. On February 14th, a delivery of bootleg whiskey was expected at Moran's headquarters. But Moran was late and happened to see police officers entering his establishment. Moran waited outside, thinking that this gunman inside were being arrested in a raid. However, the disguised assassins were acting were actually killing the seven men inside. The murdered men included Moran's best killers, Frank and, Poot and Pete Gussenberg. Reportedly, Frank was still alive when officer, real officers appeared on the scene, 
when asked who had shot him, the mortality wo mortally wounded Gussenberg kept his code of silence, responding, no one, nobody shot me. The St. Valentine's Day Massacre actually proved to be the last conf confrontation for both Cap Capone and Moran. Capone was jailed in 1931, and Moran lost so many important men that he could no longer control his territory. On the seventh anniversary of the massacre, Jack McKern, one of the Valentine's Day hitmen, was killed was killed him in a killed him in a crowded bowling alley with a burst of machine gun fire. McKern's killer remains unidentified, but was likely Moran but was likely Moran, though he was never charged with the murder. Moran was relegated to small time robberies until he was sent to jail in nineteen forty six. He died in Leavenworth Federal Prison in 1957 of lung cancer. So, yeah, this is one of the things <laughs> that we're celebrating. It's the energy, residual energy left behind of something that happened on February 14th, Valentine's Day. So, um, yeah, think about that. Think about that seriously. I used to live from, in Chicago. I lived in Illinois from the time that I was a little baby till I was 14 years old and I moved here to California. Uh, when I lived in California, I mean when I lived in Chicago, <laughs> in Chicago Heights, specifically East Chicago Heights, um, if you go out of East Chicago Heights a little bit fur further down, a few blocks down the way, you enter in a really nice neighborhood with really big houses and that was where Al Capone supposedly lived. And um, I remember I was told that when I was a teenager going to high school in Chicago, in Chicago Heights, East Chicago Heights, Illinois, um, I would ride the bus, the, the bus, the bus. <laughs> I would, that's an interesting uh, transportation, a bike and a bus. <laughs> anyway, I would ride, I would ride the, the bus up to school because there, there was no school bus that would come into East Chicago Heights. East Chicago Heights was like a war-torn uh, neighborhood. It was very, very violent. A lot of suspicious activity going on all the time. Uh, very much the definition of what a ghetto is. Um, and it was very, very much the place that nobody wanted to enter into. But when I would get on the bus, the public bus, to go to school, I would, they would go through that neighborhood, through Chicago Heights, in that area where Al Capone supp supposedly lived. And I was just like, Huh, that's interesting that an actual criminal, big time criminal, big time gangster lived here. And it's like a really nice area, or at least it was. I don't know what it looks like now because I haven't been to Chicago in ages. I haven't been since I was 14. But what's interesting is I keep coming across things that remind me of Chicago um, presently, now. Um, a lot of the living conditions right now <laughs> here it's starting to look like bar really bad parts of uh, sh Chicago. Um, what I heard was that a lot of parts of Chicago were just totally like Pagrini Green. That was a really very, uh, very, very poverty stricken area of Chicago. My One of my sisters lived there a long time ago and um, it was really, really horrible uh, how the people were living there and a lot of crime a lot of violence, a lot of all kinds of stuff that is really horrible to see and probably traumatic as well. So um, there's a lot more going, a lot more went down on Valentine's Day than just people buying each other uh, boxes of chocolates or sending, you know, Valentine's Day cards to your friends and family. <laughs> so I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Some of you probably already heard about the Valentine's Day massacre. Some of you probably didn't, so um, if not, you can feel free to add what what you want to uh, the mix of this uh, conversation here today. Um, yeah, I'm really feeling this. <laughs> it's pretty strong, this batch of sugar shakes. So. Thank you for joining me. Um, I hope that you realize that um, you don't have to have a specific day of the, of the week, of the year, of the month to tell somebody you love them or show that you love them. And I think a lot of times people prefer it when you show them that you love them instead of just buying them stuff all the time, uh, especially stuff that they don't want. <laughs> anyway, um, 
Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you uh, appreciate what you have, the love that you have, and hope you have love for yourself. Do you love yourself? That's one of the things you should think about on any day of the week, not just Valentine's Day. So thanks for joining me today. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for the likes and shares, and thank you for your kind comments. Leave your comments down below and let me know what you know about the Valentine's Day Massacre. Um, I like to share and Canvas helps with, you know, bringing forth information that not most people would know about. I mean, maybe a lot, a lot of people probably know about the Valentine's Day Massacre. Maybe not a lot of people do. What happens is a lot of times when these things aren't talked about year after year, reminding people that this actually happened, then it becomes a part of history that's no longer part of history. Something else takes over, like the Hallmark holiday type of vibe takes over these events that happened um, on this day. But people just want to keep connecting it with uh, flowers and chocolate and cards. But um, there's so much more that happens on these specific days. So I hope you guys are aware of what you're celebrating and not just buying into the commercialism of it all. So with that note, with that note, and on that note, <laughs> thanks for joining me today. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so by going to my Google Pay or my PayPal, which I'll have in the links in the description below. And um, in exchange for your donations, I will create a video of your choosing whatever to topic that you choose. I can do a video about it. But let's keep it to, on this channel, maybe keep it in lines with the things that I've been talking about already. If you look in the... Um, the library of videos that I have on this channel, you'll see what kind of videos that I bring forth to all of you. So um, that's what I could do. It can also make you a piece of handmade artwork as well. So check out my Etsy shop, my Instagram, all over the place, <laughs> and see what kind of art that I make. You can even see past videos of the art that I make and what I'm selling. I'll also have my big cartel um, I'll have my big cartel link in the description below as well. So thank you all, one and all, and brightest blessings, and I'll see you soon.